as any other three points, but these feel a bit different. <laughs> It's a special one, obviously. It's been a long time since uh, since the club hasn't beat uh, Man City, and um, and we discussed that a lot, and and we felt like today today could be the day, but we needed a big performance, uh, huge individual performances, and and we had that, and with a bit of luck, we managed to win the game. What do you feel was was maybe just missing from your side today? No, it was a tight game. We we were there, so we didn't allow it in this stadium. They they consider they they did they do a lot a lot of things, good things, and. Uh, and yeah, with the body for our control and for uh, our defense, they defend really well. The players they gave everything, so no regrets at all. So it's football. We we lost the game, and and uh, maybe we need to leave it behind for our you know contenders to you know after what happened in the past, and yeah, we come back stronger. A win only brings three points, no matter who it's against. But it just feels a little bit bigger that you've won this game. Is it significant? Yeah, of course. When you play against the big teams, it's always more special, you know. And yeah, we are so happy with with this victory because we know how hard it is to to play against them, you know. Does this send out a bit of a message to the Premier League that Manchester City aren't going to waltz to the title this year? Well, it certainly sends a message to our team, you know, that uh, keep doing what we're doing and stay humble and and work hard, and uh, and then we are a very very difficult team to beat. Um, some may pe- say that was quite a cautious match. Was that the tactic to go out and get a win here? Can you talk us through that defeat? No, the thing is, not a cautious. Both teams want to press high. Both teams want to have the ball. Those one teams want to attack, but the other ones maybe don't allow the other the other team. But uh, it was a tight game. The first minutes were really good. You have a two clear chances. They have a good momentum uh, in the first minutes, the second half. But in general. In general, uh, yeah, I was at that game, and at the end of the flexion, they, they, they won the game. Second defeat back to back in the Premier League, if third if you count the Carabao Cup as well, all without Rodri. Does that explain a lot of it, or what's it down to? Uh, Rodri really is so important, but we have to find, of course, Caracao is another competition by the Premier League since 2018. is the first time we lost two games in a row. That What does it mean? That uh, the reason why we won Premier League is because we didn't lose much. Um, Kovacic, uh, the first first tackle, did you think that was a red, potentially? And then were you surprised that he stayed on after the second? Another red? No, a second yellow? Uh, I, I don't know if the referee didn't say it. I'm pretty sure if it's red card, it should be, should be given. That's, that's pretty sure. So, so that's why if, uh, it's not, because it was not. And the second one, was it a bit risky to go in for a tackle like that when you're on a yellow? Um, again, I didn't touch him, so it was not. That is my perspective. But I didn't see the images. Sorry, I'm sorry. You maybe for the Tribune sitting in your place, maybe you saw it better than me. It just looked a little uh, risky. Um, what do you take going forward from this? Then everyone talking about this being an acid test for the title. The first time Arsenal have won this match in 13 meetings. How do you see it in your title race? It's a long road, so it's intensive in October, so many games. From my experience, many things are going to happen. And uh, yeah, keep going and move forward. Thank you very much. A great feeling, obviously. You could sense, you know, it's been, it's been so many years without beating them. And, uh, and today we have beat, in my opinion, without a question or doubt, the best team in the world. And we've done it in a, in a great way, you know, because there were moments that we have to suffer. But as well, we have moments where we show real determination and, and desire to and belief to beat them. So uh, really happy. Does it send a statement? Because as you say, it's been such a long time. Mm. You know, they're probably you, you know the team you, you have to overhaul to win the title. How important is that as a statement? As well? well, it certainly sends a message to the team. You know, they keep believing in what they are doing. They are a fantastic group of players. Um, the way they try, you know, the understanding and the chemistry that they have between them. You sense it, and you need it to. To be that, so today again, really proud. I was proud on Wednesday when we lost the game, and I'm really proud today as well to be part of, of that team. Good to Amy from the Athletic. Hi, Miguel. Hi. Um, there's been quite a lot of talk about this. Arsenal's team is quite emotional, but was the key today that it was controlled emotion? You know, you've got to get that sweet spot between getting yourself going but also being totally focused. Yes, and uh, especially because there are certain moments that they are constantly a question, asking questions and provoking you, you know, and and the crowd wants you to go and go and go. And uh, is the, what did the crowd they do? We don't go. And the crowd that we don't go. And the crowd that and we have to manage that. And uh, 
And we have to understand emotionally it's not easy, you know, and emotionally it's not easy to chase 15, 20 passes and you have to be able to do that and then have the courage to, to play because if you don't want to play against this team, you just give the ball to them every single time and I thought the plays were excellent. Can I just ask you a bit about the uh, atmosphere in the dressing room? You know, the players maybe needed a moment like that. To, how did you feel being back in there with them? Well, they were all dancing and super happy. They were international breaks. You know, the mood is, is always much better. They're going to have a few days off, the ones that they're not involved. And uh, it just sends everybody uh, till the next game against Chelsea away with, with the right spirit and the right emotion. And, uh, and it's great. So, really happy. It didn't impact the result in the end, but Kovacic took quite easily. Mm. Either got straight red card or certainly two yellows. What, what did you make of those situations? Well, I saw the obviously the the, the action live and um, and it looked you know uh, a big challenge. But uh, I haven't seen the replay and not bothered now today. I just want to enjoy the win. Uh, I hear it. We will talk about it and uh, and understand we have to do something about it. But um, thankfully, we managed to win the game, as you said. I mean, is that testament to the work you've been doing this week, or how does that reflect on the Well, that the players have to stand up there and, and, and execute against players that they are top quality and we give them something in the first two minutes with the corner and they almost score a goal and you cannot give them anything and uh, they can still earn it because they are top quality and they can produce those moments any moment but we have discussed a lot about that and uh, it is a stressful because they change shape constantly, they change the spaces, rotations, they are constantly threatening you in certain areas and you have to be really, really aware of, of what they are doing to try to match it up and with the ball as well, because they are provoking you with certain things and you have to be patient. And, and for David today it was tough because I knew that the crowd at some stage he could react like it. But it's what demanded him to do and what we needed to do. And we did it better than the second half, we did it much better. And I think it was really helpful. Okay, Nick, got him. Okay, um, we've spoken for a long time about the run that you've had against City, not winning. Do you get the impression, especially with the guys in, in there now, that a psychological barrier has, has lifted? Well, I don't know if it was a barrier. Obviously, it's something that uh, we needed to go through. You know, to beat them, first of all, you have to lose against them. We have to lose probably the way we lost uh, at the Etihad because we lost in two different ways last season here when we were the better team, especially in the in the first half, and then we conceded the goal when on the back pass of Tomeyas when the Bruyne scoring. But uh, the team showed a real maturity today. That maturity comes from experiences, and uh, and something you need that to to become a better team. Let's ask about Tomeyasu because. Um, you brought him on and it looked from the side like more of a defensive move and then mm. he's making the centre forward. I just told him that. <laughs> if they told me, you know, they put Doku there in the first moment after they changed him to, to the other side and we made the changes straight away. And, uh, and then I see him as a left winger and chasing the keeper. And uh, yeah, they brought, to be fair, the shots were excellent again. They got involved in, in the goal, but they brought so much uh, physicality and, and so much energy and quality to the team. Jack no, he could not make it. He hasn't had a single training session, so he will be out. He's not going to be in the England squad? No, he's not available to play football at the moment. And can I just ask, how, at the end, there was a bit of a clash between some of your staff and the Man City players. Do you know what happened in that? No, I haven't seen nothing. OK, last couple. We'll go to um, Isan from the Daily Mail. Martin Ali, obviously, has long had a big impact on the side. Well, he's been saying for a few weeks I'm going to be there against City and obviously everybody was saying Gabby will be too early for you and yesterday he said boss I told you I'm going to be ready for this and it happened that Leo after 30 minutes he felt something in his hamstring so when I turned around he was already ready to go with his kids you know boss I'm ready to go so it's just a joy of a kid. His mentality is incredible at his age, and uh, it's just a joy to have him because today he could change the game, and he was really helpful for us to win the game. Good afternoon to everyone. Congratulations, Arsenal, for the victory. Tight game. We start really well the first minutes. They start really well in the beginning, the second half with Martinelli. They increased the rhythm. The other was tight, and uh, we didn't create much. Didn't create much. And we defend really well both teams, and uh, and at the end, uh, uh, yeah, when deflection like it was Wolves, we lost the game. Did you think it was a fair, fair result overall? It's what it's what it's what it is. It's what it is. Yeah. It's what it is. I'm yeah. not going to. I would love to change it, and I think I don't have this ability to change it. So it's what it is. You, you seem very frustrated at the, at the final whistle, obviously understandable, but in a, in a particular reason, yeah. No. No. 
I say congratulations to the referees to try to avoid the yellow card again and and uh, congratulate my players, some players of them, my colleague Mikel and our fans and come back. No. So, you said it was a, it was a tight game. Was that the kind of game you set out for it to be? Were you when you came here today with the game plan? Was that what well, we were looking forward to find more players in the middle, especially Julian and the other one to find. But they defend really well. They make incredible high pressing. It's difficult to do it because Raya had the ability to play in short and long. It's not easy to control these long balls with uh, with Gabriel. Uh, but we know it. It's, it's a fantastic team. They defend well, and 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 we know it. But in general, it was a tight, tight game. I think, for example, the year like last season or two years ago. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, two years ago when we won one two or we three last season. They, they control more the game that was today, for example, and we won. So sometimes it happened. In terms of that plan, normally Jack really fits in so well for the kind of game you would like, normally like to play here. A lot, of, a lot of touches, a lot of passes. It wasn't in the team today, was that? Yeah, well, the fact, the fact that we didn't have Rodri, I want to put more protection with the ball. The players like they are really good with the ball, with Bernardo Cova and, and, and Rico, and have players in the middle that have the ability to turn and attack. And that is, was the reason why to be a team so white. And, uh, and that's why we decide. So, uh, of course, Jack could have played, but start to come back. The play in Leipzig was really, really good. And, but today I decide to, to other players. Um, uh, Matteo Kovacic was booked in the first half. Were you worried he was going to get sent off there? Did you think about taking Well, for the reaction for, for everyone, the second action, but uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's not sent off because he was not sent off. Because if he was sent off, he would be sent off. That I'm pretty sure of that. So at the end, when they decided, because nothing wrong happened. Did you think about taking him off at half-time? No, 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 for the reason. Come from the injured, played the last minute, and of course, Mateus also had the ability with the ball, and that's why we did it. Hi, Patrick. Um, you've now lost all three matches without Rodri. Mm. Could you have imagined that when you got um, sent off against Forest? And how worried are you about how reliable, how much you've come to rely upon him? Well, but Rodri is a really important player, like in other ones, for the fact that. Uh, that uh, the last years play a lot, a lot of games, but uh, yeah, the game from Carabao Cup was a little bit different. But of course, against Wolves was important today as well. So we know it. So yeah, but we, as a manager, I had to find the moment he's not there. So find a way to do it. That's why it didn't work to play against Wolves. That uh, Matteo playing just alone there, he's not used much, and I want a protection with the players that control and find some players in other positions, and that was the plan. So. Uh, like didn't win, so nothing. Uh, is there something you did not like about your team today? Nothing. Even I don't like it, I would tell them, but after what they have done in the past, so I have always gratitude for that guy. They give everything, so they, they afford, and I know how disappointing they are because we're not, we're not used, but it's, it's football, it's happened. So for statistics, we, have to, we don't have to win the Premier League, so. No team ever have won four in a row, so for statistics it didn't happen, but we are in October, sometimes it's good going behind, it's not the first time we went behind for the contenders there up front, last season we were in much, much behind than, than here, but the season is long, you know, recover people coming back and, and yeah, try to break immediately as soon as possible against tough opponents like it's Brighton United, you know, the, the situation and, and yeah, continue. Uh, well, Arsenal fans won't care, obviously, because no. they've beaten City and they've got the three points. For the neutral, it didn't exactly have us on the edge of our seats, did it? <laughs> it certainly wasn't free-flowing, was it? Um, it was intriguing, it was intense. I think there was nerves. It created a bit of caution and it wasn't particularly good from a creative point of view. Um, sometimes you have to dig in, sometimes you have to find a way of winning, even when you don't play that well. And if you're a manager and you make substitutions, you're praying they have an impact. <laughs> When you bring four on and they all contribute to the winning goal, I think God said will be having a nice glass of wine tonight. <laughs> this is the goal. Thomas Party, he's been missing. He came on a sub, he got on the ball. And this is one of the first times you see a ball played over the top. Look at Kyle Walker keeping an eye on Martinelli. He thinks, I better get across. That creates a space for Tommy Asu, who's come on at left back, by the way, who's running behind. Havertz holds it up. Martinelli follows in and you get the deflection, you get that bit of luck you deserve. But it was amazing in a game of such high quality how few players risked playing balls in behind the other defence. 
and that was one of the first times and Havertz did well holding it up and that bit of luck you need in a tight game that goes your way gives them gives them a huge boost that does for Arsenal moving forward psychologically as well to beat City after last year will do a lot for the group um, the, the, the stats will show that, that City struggled offensively in mm. particular but actually Arsenal didn't allow them to flourish offensively no they didn't they stopped them playing um, they, even when they got into forward positions because of every single player knew their job knew what they were doing so whether that was def whether that was a defender a midfielder or an attacker like we're going to see here they pressed from the front when they had to which then stopped at its source you can see they've got bodies forward there they're committing them forward and they're trying to press and, and force them into uh, errors or certainly kick it long like they try to there so the forwards are in that in that position are doing their jobs and then defensively 1v1 they weren't afraid to uh, to do that and this is this is what happened I mean, Man City only had one shot on mm. target and it was because every single player was, was that. When they did get through, it's Rice there, who I thought was, uh, was really impressive. Again, he saved it off the, uh, off the line. Um, and th th I love this one here with Saliba. How many times have you seen Haaland go shoulder to shoulder with a defender and try and barge him off? He was having none of that. He, <laughs> did, he hardly had a kick today, did, uh, did, did Haaland in and around the 18-yard box. They stick with him. Yes, they get into the forward position again. What about that for a tackle? Last ditch, maybe. But they, they, they obviously sacrificed themselves going forward, but that meant that stability at the, uh, at the back. And Man City did lack width, and he did, a lot of it did come down the middle, and that did suit Arsenal at times. But they tried to change it. They put Doku on, who, tr who tried to give them a little bit of width. But again, there was just no way through for, uh, for him with Ben White there. What about this for a tackle? from midfielder Rice again, last ditch, but they had all of that and you can see what it means to them and that's why they kept their clean sheet because they were superb in every department defensively. But I said that, you know, the, the stats would show that they struggled City. So for all, for all the praise for Arsenal, just when you looked at City today with how they lined up, yeah. both of you, I mean, you go first, do you, do you think they look slightly imbalanced? Yeah, without doubt. There's no doubt that they miss Rodri. I mean, he's, he's a world-class player and everything that, he, that he, everything that he gives them. Don't forget, they're also they're missing the creativity of, of De Bruyne. Um, but they'll be all right. They, they, as Pep said in their interview, they'll come back um, and it'll hurt them, but they'll come back stronger. I, th I thought also, you know, moving Alvarez has been so good in that role behind Haaland that pushed him out wide yeah. brought in a midfielder to play in that role Lewis who was more of a defensive midfielder was a fullback so he had three defensive midfielders really which said to me I mean if I was looking at that team in the dressing room at Arsenal I'd be thinking come on boys and I just one thing quickly on Arteta as well I thought the little move to push Rice on start Jorginho helped with what I was talking about that you know being able to press them high up with a bit more tenacity and athleticism mm. well I mean we're still very early on in the season but is that a bigger win for Arsenal than it is a bigger defeat for City? I mean, Absolutely, given City, yeah. City know what to do after Christmas it's and been chase so down. so long that Arsenal haven't beaten them. It had to happen sooner rather than later for them to give them the belief going forward that they've actually got a chance. My concern is it, it you know, it makes City angry. <laughs> and they go on a longer <laughs> unbeaten run than they do most seasons. Because they are capable of responding, we know that. Um, in the end, this didn't affect the outcome, but was Kovacic lucky to stay on? Yeah, uh, I think he was very fortunate to stay on today. I mean, the, the, the first tackle there, I think it's, it's bordering on amber, and he, he perhaps got away with that with it being a straight red card. Um, but then... It's gone soft, Dal, hasn't it? But then... That's <laughs> not... No, that, Danny, that's not yellow, a great tackle. When you're tackle. on that yellow card, then you can't tackle like that there. And, yeah, he's been fortunate there. I think that should have been a second yellow card there for a red. Danny? I actually like what the referee's done there. Not every tackle you miss should be a yellow. And Michael Oliver's a good ref and he's from a tough part of the world, so he knows what he's on about. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but in, uh, and, and, and I think a lot of people would go along with I'm you saying. on that, but in the current, in the in current, the current climate, those two back-to-back -back very quickly, in, in other games you would see a ref for that. That's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem, yeah, isn't exactly it? that. And that's where people get frustrated. By recent events we've seen, that's two yellows, yeah. But I'm, I'm glad he made the decision he did. OK. To Pep Guardiola. Did you think, Sesc, at one stage we weren't going to get a goal and they were just going to cancel each other out? Yes, I did. I think uh, the game lacked a little bit of quality in the final third. Obviously, missing uh, players like Saka, De Bruyne, Rodri, 
uh, in this stage, you know, it's, it's, it's big. I have to give a lot of respect to both sets of defenders, to be honest with you. I thought they defended well, especially in transition when either team did break away. They managed to get back in the position as well or snuff it out. Or like Seth said, that in the final third, players just didn't pick the right options, which we saw on both sides. But in general, I thought both teams defended really, really well. I thought the main reason it was uh, a low-scoring game or looked like it was going to be a nil-nil was that both managers set up with plenty of respect for each other. I was going to say put a negative team out. They didn't put a negative team out personnel-wise, but straight away, Sask said to us within 10 seconds, three centre midfielders for, for Manchester City. Normally, they'll play a Rodri and then two number 10s, play really high, wide players and one centre forward. Straight away, they had almost a bank of three sat there and then they had their wide players tucked in and they were using their wit football, uh, full-backs for, for wit. So they were respecting each other. They both know that either team could, could you know, dan provide danger to one another. So I think both teams set up you know, cautiously, let's say, filled the midfield, wanted to win that midfield battle and subsequently had a lot of midfield players in there. So I think that's the main reason why it was, it was so few chances and when it why it could have ended up being a nil-nil. And is that the sign of the trajectory Arsenal are on for the treble winners to do that? They have fresh legs, they have a good bench coming on, and as uh, it's been proven, it made a big difference today. But yeah, I think it was a set-up plan, you know, for, for a draw. Uh, both teams respecting each other. A little big players made a big difference in, in, in not having this, this quality in the final third. Mm. And in these big games, the fine margins, you need a stroke of luck. And Martinelli and Arsenal, Got that. Correct. The little, the little details at the end of quality. I know the goal wasn't top, top quality because it's a little bit lack. But yeah, this ball is top quality. Tom Yasu making a run in midfield, laying it off. And, uh, you know, like Sean said, you need to try and you need to shoot. Odegaard didn't have his best game today, but he tried a few times. And you never know. You know, if you don't shoot, you will never score. That's 100% sure. So you have to try your luck sometimes. And it went in, fortunately. I just wonder whether Ake there. I mean, they always say that defenders should never cross. He's the left centre half and he was almost, I know it's easy to say in hindsight, but he, he's in a position there and he starts coming across and across and actually goes past his man, his centre half partner. And I just wonder whether he should come that far across. Again, it's hindsight because it you know deflects and it goes in, so you're always going to look at that. But I think the goalkeeper might have saved it if it hadn't have uh, deflected. And I just wonder whether he should have kept creeping over and over and over and almost blocking the view of a goalkeeper as well. What do you think? Might be harsh, but... <laughs> Not happy about it, but... <laughs> Arsenal, but either way, if you're going to shoot, you, 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 sometimes you hope for a ricochet as a player when you're in those little tight areas to get a shot at through bodies. Of course, you want it to go clean through, but a ricochet in those little tight areas to get a shot at through bodies. Of course, you want it to go clean through, but a ricochet, and even more because he drags Walker in, and once Walker's inside, that leaves that space for Martinelli, and it's impossible for him to get to, and then... Yeah, you can't do anything. It's that little bit of luck that you make when you play football, and only, you only make it if you try things. And that desire from Arsenal again late on to, to not settle for the nil-nil, to, to keep going. I think it's the, the, the ambition and the mentality that this team is showing lately, you know, and the belief that we first said before the game started that the Emirates now is booming again. They believe that something can happen at any time, at any point against any team. And that's really important for the vibes within the stadium, for the players, for the staff. The momentum is there and they need to take advantage of it. Now, um, 39 seconds before Arsenal scored that goal, there was a challenge. Um, we saw Pep Guardiola up. He was still going up, as we'll show you in a moment, after the goal. Feeling City should have had a free kick. Uh, Gabriel on Haaland, you, you mentioned it at the time. Yeah, for me, I, I do think that's a foul. You're not allowed to jump over people What's like that. Pep at the bottom of your screen? Yeah, I, I get it. Like, I get the frustration, but I still feel like from then, there's, there's still a long way to go before this goal happens. I think the players... This is after the goal. Need to... Still going on. You can't pull it back, though, can you, Steve, once it's, it's done? So he's going to be upset and frustrated about it, but it's football. There was some fouls that both sides of the teams got away with within that game when there weren't no goals. It's a definite foul. It's a, it is a definite foul. I mean, I've been there in that position. If you're in... The defender stands behind, because obviously he's covering the goal. He don't want you to run behind him. But that's your space as a centre forward in front. If he wants to get in front, he's got to come round and, and nip in in front. He can't bundle you over or jump onto your shoulders, or, or you know, he, he he can't do that. He could, as I say, he's he's more than willing to to come round and nip it and risk going over the top. He stands behind 
almost letting you have that, that little area of space. He then can't bundle you over and, you know, if you're about to chest it or head it, he can't jump on your back like that. That's sort of a, you know, that's the, the striker's face that, that, that they've almost allowed. So I think that's a definite foul. OK, well, just to get some Arsenal reaction, who better to speak to than the match winner, Gabriel Martinelli, who's waiting to talk to us. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us. Very well done. What did that feel like at the end, Gabriel? Thank you. Yeah, it feels, feels great to be back and uh, win a game like that. We know how tough it is to play against them and, yeah, so happy with the victory and to be back with, with the team. We know how tough it is to play against them and, yeah, so happy with the victory and to be back with, with the team to, to come in. I was, I was waiting for this moment since the day I picked the, the injury and yeah, I was so happy to come in and uh, happier with, with my performance in the team as well and the win. Gabriel, it's great to see you back on the football pitch. What were your instructions when the manager sent you on? To be fair, he just said, uh, go there and do your thing, you know. Just do what you normally do. Hola, Gabi. Soy Cés. Uh, felicidades. Um, my question to you is, do you visualise the game when you are on the bench? Do you think what your strengths are do you, when you have to face someone like Walker? What is your mentality? He says, good to speak to you. Uh, yeah, of course, I was on the bench with, with the players and Fab was next to me. I was always talking to him and uh, visualizing uh, what could I do when I come in and this is what I did. And, and I tried to, to do my best when I come in and I think it worked. And at the end, Gabriel, the, the message is just keep going. I mean, if you don't shoot, you don't score. Yeah, that's it. If you don't shoot, you don't score. <laughs> no. Right, I'm Gabriel, Sean Wright Phillips there. Um, I enjoyed watching you play. I'm glad you scored, obviously, <laughs> today. But um, when you come up against a player like Walker in general, who's quick, powerful, how do you think about moving him around? Or do you just stay wide and let him tuck in? I always try to, to give space to myself, you know, because I know that he's quick and he's strong as well. So I try to, to be away from him and uh, know my qualities. And, if I'm 1v1, I can I trust myself and just try to, to do my game, you know. Gabriel, finally, um, your manager's been talking about this record, 12 consecutive defeats against Arsenal. Uh, it's about December 2015 since you last beat them in the, in the Premier League against Manchester City, obviously. What does it do for belief mentality within your dressing room to, to beat the treble winners today? Uh, when you play for Arsenal, you need to, to have this mentality, you know. Uh, we have to to win every single game and try to, to win every every uh, tournament that we, we are in, you know, and this is our mentality and this is what we are trying to do. Well, you've done it today. Brilliant effort. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. Gabriel Martinelli live for you from the Emirates. Just a, before we talk about Manchester, just a quick one on the mentality. We touched on it right at the start. If they could do it, what it would do to that young group? I think it just will bring even more positivity. I know how much they want to win the Premier League. As I mentioned before, I've been at the training ground recently and I know that they are waiting to you put can that smell trophy. It, can you, I can you, smell it yeah. that they are all waiting for that moment and they are working towards it in a, in a very passionate uh, way. They're doing quick. I think it's closer than it's ever been for the last, I would say, 12 to 15 years. Let's get back to what Pep was saying. Um, as I say, December 2018, the last time they lost back-to-back -back Premier League games, you know what they did after that? They were 19 of the next 20. <laughs> so we're still very <laughs> early on. Is that a message for the rest? Don't, don't get too excited. This, this, is, this is the champions of five of the last six seasons. I said it to you before when we was just talking just in the green room before, and I said to you, like, I don't think it's as big a game yet as, say, it would have been maybe... November or December, I think it's come really early in the season. Obviously, for Arsenal and that reason, it's not winning in so many games to beat the, the treble winners. It's massive in respects of that. But in terms of the league table, there's so much time and so much games to go. There's a lot of teams in and around it now that both of these teams most probably will still drop points from. Hopefully not, but I think it's going to be open. I think it's more about the emotional. Yeah. I have to no, agree with emotionally, you. Emotionally, it's, it's just an important game. Yeah. Not about so much the points or, or where you are on the table now, but emotionally, this is a big game for Arsenal, I think. Mm. Michael? 
Yeah, I, I think so. I think more so than the points, the belief that that will give these Arsenal players. You know, they it was their first season really last season when they could sniff, you know, winning the league. And they went a decent length of time where you're thinking, are they going to be able to hang on? It was a good title race for them, but they did fall away at the end. So I think now, you know, beating Manchester City in a one-off game will give them that belief that they can become champions. Um, so the three points are great. You know, they they tally up and they're, they're, they're joint top of the, the table. But I think the buzz around the place for just beating Manchester City will be even more important than that. But there won't be too much concern about back-to-back -back Premier League defeats we've mentioned. It doesn't happen very often because of the high standards. It's only three times now under Pep alone. Um, no, I don't think there'll be too much concern. Like I said, I don't. They didn't create a lot of chances. Neither team did. I don't necessarily think they played. I thought they played quite well. In that tactical situation, they just got a goal that was deflected, and like I said, they earned that. But for me, I think this may wake them up more and make them even hungrier than they are to try and emulate it and try and win a Premier League again. Because now they know their teams are going to beat them in that in that manner in the top half in the top three of that table. I think. We highlighted before the game, didn't we, the, the effect that Rodri has on yeah. this team. And yeah. it just shows you, I mean, Pep Guardiola spoke about it. He's almost used three men to, to almost, you know, uh, negate the, the gap that Rodri's left there today. If Rodri was fit, I would have thought that Manchester City would play their normal way, quite expansive, quite open, a lot braver. I thought they were probably not as brave as they normally are today. I mean, Haaland hardly got a kick. He well, certainly didn't get a chance. Haaland, for only the second time in the Premier League, hasn't had an attempt on target since yeah. he signed for Manchester City. And I think that that is a knock-on effect of them having to withdraw players from attacking positions. As we spoke about before, they lack the width. They started bringing players inside to just compete in that midfield area. Rodri's not here. We might need two or three players instead then to just beef that area up. And all of a sudden, that's got to take effect somewhere on the pitch. And that's what they did. They, they almost, you know, um, said, right, OK, from an attack point of view, we're going to be less dangerous. And that's what it looked like. So I think, the, I think he would have grabbed a draw and, and ran today the way he set up his team. But again, just go back to it. The influence that Rodri has on this team is huge. Mm. They've lost five of the last ten without him. He's just missed three in all competitions. They've lost them all. Yeah, I mean, he's where he is at the moment uh, for a reason. Last year he won the treble, then he went away with Spain. I was and say, he I'm sure you'll mention the Spain the, trophy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I mean, you know, his quality, he's improved a lot. He's a leader now. The consistency he's got in his performance, but not only that, being on the pitch, the teammates, you know, they, they, they look up to you. And yeah, a big miss, but considering the squad that Man, uh, that Man City have, you know, and, and the amount of money that they spend, they should have, you know, a straight replacement, which probably it was Calvin Phillips. When you see him, they put Bernardo Silva as a number six when he's an offensive player. So to change the whole tactics around one player for a club of the state of, of, of Man City, I think it's a little bit too much, but, uh, but yeah, definitely a, a key figure for, for them. I mean, is it... Is it easy to go back to the end of last season and say, well, their midfield was Gundogan, De Bruyne and Rodri? And none of them, obviously, were there today. Or, or has Cesc got a point that it's Man City and, you, you know, the squad you've got, you should be able to cope? Um, it's, I'd, I'd say it's a bit of both. I, I can agree with some of what Cesc is saying, but if, for whatever reason, he won't play Calvin Phillips in those positions... Does it's... that surprise you, Sean? Um, yeah, but then I also can kind of understand it. I, Why? I, because... Pep is very attention to detail, information. And if he's giving him that much, Calvin might not be able to relay it on the pitch for whatever reason, because he goes to England and he plays well all the time. But for whatever reason, when it's at City, he just doesn't play the way in a way you should say Rodri plays, where Rodri controls the game. No matter what he plays, has the, he had an opportunity to do that though, Sean? It's it's hard though. How do, how do you give him that opportunity when Rodri is playing like? At that yeah, but Rodri hasn't the been time. there now for, three for the last three games. Yes, agreed. No chance. And, and something, for example, as an example, like yesterday I, we played the game. It's a completely different subject, but it means the same, the same concept. That there was a boy, I had a lot of injuries in defence, so there was a boy that in training I just didn't trust him. I didn't give him a chance yesterday. For whatever reason, he had to play. He came on and he, he was probably man of the match. Sometimes you just need to give 
these people that you the don't see think the confidence, that the was, opportunity. Was, yeah, that, it was. That's when England got to the Euro final, Calvin Phillips was England's yeah. player of the year. Yeah, agreed. He played every minute of that tournament. And today was that opportunity that yeah. you're referring to. You've got the main man out. It was right on the table. You've got... Now you're playing an attacking player in Bernardo Silva as a number six. I mean, I never thought I'd... Re Sean, sorry, pick up the debate. That was interesting as well. <laughs> yeah, so what I was going to say is basically is that are we having this conversation about, say, the Calvin Phillips situation not going in there because of the result? Because effectively, just like Bernardo said, well, we no, most probably would have been having this conversation. No, but it's three results, isn't it? No, I get the three results, but I mean, this one key, according to me, like, Man City played OK. They didn't deserve to lose, but they lost. When Bernardo played left back, there would have been a conversation like this if City had lost. People would have said, well, why is Pep playing left back? Pep's obviously seen something and seen the way he wants to play, and maybe Calvin Phillips just didn't suit the way he wanted to play with those tactics today, we, we don't actually know. Yeah, there's obviously has to be hindsight in everything. But we stood on that table over there yeah. half an hour before the game and highlighted the, la the, the last game that they lost, um, where Rodri would have played and, and how he would have done things differently. We looked at some stats on with and without Rodri. So, yes, hindsight after the game, that no matter where somebody gets injured on the pitch, you don't have to shuffle three, four, five players to all of a sudden bolster an area because you're now weak in an area. And we're just highlighting, I guess, how important this player is to City. Sask? Agreed. Couldn't say anything else. I mean, he's a big, big player, but, uh, you know, to be able to change so many key pieces around, you know, the puzzle, a puzzle that has worked so well during the last couple of seasons for City that made them champions of absolutely everything formations that we don't have but I also in a way do believe that players when we get into opportunity of a game day it's the mentality of game and I think today was the real chance as it as I would have said if I was here uh, for the game against Wolves and the game against Newcastle the one and only Colo Torre how you doing Colo um I'm fine listen just tell us what was the stadium like when that goal went in it was incredible. The feeling was fantastic. You could see the Arsenal fans buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. It was a, it was a good game, I believe. Uh, I think for me, Arsenal deserved to win, uh, by the way, because they created more chances. You could see even on the goal, uh, at the end of the game, uh, Tomasu, which is a left back, came up there. He is, is the one who created uh, the opportunity. Everything come from him, and that showed that Arsenal knew that there was. That was the best time for them to beat uh, this Man City that I think are uh, missing few key players. And it's always difficult when you don't have De Bruyne, you don't have Rodri, um, you, you, you're missing Kundogan. You know, guys like that are massive for this club, in, our, in my opinion. Season, you know how important mentality is. What does that do, do you think, to the, to the Arsenal dressing room now to get a result like that? I think this is a big, big sign there. Big, big sign that um, Arsenal have sent to all the league and especially to Man City. They sent to Man City there, in my opinion, to make sure to reduce the space. And that gives space to the, to the goalkeeper. You know, you, you cannot, you, you, you have to go to him. I think Ake in this position is quite difficult. He's very, very unlucky for him because as a defender, you cannot leave that ball goes really because you don't know where he's going. And I think that uh, fair play to Arsenal, they did it really, really well and they scored that goal, but that's really unlucky from Ake there. He played well. Um, Kolo is shown, as you, you can see, I hope. Um, lucky from Ake there, he played well. Um, Kolo is shown, as you, you can see, I hope. Um, yeah, should Walker have gone in side as he did to give that space up to Martinelli out wide or surely he had stayed kind of in between? You should have stayed inside, you know, the priority is inside. You make sure that the ball doesn't get there. Bring someone in, encourage them, coax them in, you know, and almost put pressure on themselves because then you bum, 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 and all of a sudden there's two or three players out the game. So sometimes when you're playing the ball around, it's not necessarily to play the ball through because it's very difficult to play the through, ball through a whole team. It's actually to, to encourage or to yeah. tempt teams to think, right, let's have a high press. And all of a sudden, you use your goalkeeper, get an extra man, and all of a sudden you're through and you're only on to about four or five players. 
So a lot of the time, these these coaches are, are not just saying, right, let's let's use the, the ball and, and, and have a beautiful passing game. They're trying to take a risk, trying to suck them in, and then they will go through. You've played in many teams like that, haven't you, in your career? Yes, I have. And uh, I think I agree totally with Michael. It's all about intentions. The main point is, like he's saying, attract the opponents, make them believe that they can come and press you to get the ball back. And that's where you start finding the spaces around them because you've already offered and press you to get the ball back. And that's where you start finding the spaces around them because you've already, of course, coached them. You've worked it at the training ground. You know the exact moments. You know how to find the third man. You know how to put your body in the right position to give solutions to your teammates. And that to put it out there and, and, and for their mentality today. Important now when they resume after the international break, to really build on this? They've given themselves a great foundation today. Yes, because I think if you ask uh, Mikel and every Arsenal player, what would they prefer now is to have another game after three days, mm -hmm. or after five days, not to kill this break that will, you know, kill a little bit the momentum that they just created. But yeah, we will see, we'll see what happens after the national team. Chelsea, so. Yeah, well, it is. Let's see what happens, but... Uh, a strong game to, to come back from the international and uh, everyone will be, need to be ready for it. No panic buttons on the uh, blue side of Manchester just yet? No, definitely not. Um, obviously, of course, we know Rodri is back and Kevin De Bruyne is still a bit away, I should imagine, but the team's good. The team's in a good place. Like I said, I don't think they played terribly today. I thought they played quite well against a strong Arsenal team. They just didn't create enough to get that, that goal. And statistics tell you when they're angered, they come back with a, <laughs> a run of results like we've quoted. So in that case, I really hope they're really, really mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope they're madder than you, anyway, that's for sure. Um, what about, just to round off the rest of the Premier League, what about Liverpool and, and Spurs looking at that result today? Well, Spurs have been uh, one of the stories of the season so far. I love the way they play. They'll be... But for them to look at the together. fixture, I mean, and go, wow. Yeah. They've lost to Wolves. They've now been beaten by yeah, Arsenal. Yeah, no, it's given everybody, as you say, Liverpool, Spurs... Um, you know, the likes of Aston Villa are up there as well now. It's give everybody a little bit of a lift, saying, right, OK, okay this could be a little bit open now. Newcastle United are another team. Um, so it's, it's, it's open. The Premier League is open after results like that. Now, it's a marathon, not a sprint, as we know. Manchester City always get better and better throughout the season. But at the moment, it's looking really open. And, uh, and if Arsenal and Wolves can beat Manchester City, then... Other teams will be looking at it and thinking, we can too. Maybe. The gentlemen have enjoyed that. Absolutely fascinating. Seth, great to have you with us. Thank you very much. First time Arsenal have beaten Manchester City since December 2015. If City had won that 1-0 in a game where there was very little in it, we'd say, well, that's what champions do. That's what good teams do. They find a way to win a game when there's nothing in it. So we should, we should say the same about Arsenal's ability to get over the line. Yeah, we should, especially... You know, considering the run that Arsenal have, have had previously against Manchester City, did I hear it was 12, 12 victories for, for Manchester City on the run? Arsenal had to find a way of stopping that. They'd played them in the uh, Charity Shield, the Community Cup at the start of the, of the season, as it's uh, been renamed, and got over the line. They came back with that late equaliser. Then they, they won on penalty kicks, and you just thought, have they found a way to compete? Have they found a way mm. to... Have they turned the corner? And I thought it was vital that they backed it up today by getting the three points. It wasn't a great game. It wasn't pretty. But tactically, they nullified anything that Manchester City could really do. Fewer shots I think Manchester City have ever had under Pep Guardiola. And with a little bit of luck, they found a way to and win I, the game. And I think that's right. It wasn't a great game. But it was quite intriguing because you, you, you wanted to know what was going to break the deadlock. Was it going to be a bit of magic? Was it going to be a bit of a, was it a mistake? It ended up being a, a deflection off Ake's face. So I, I don't think either side deserved all three points, to be honest with you. I just think it was very much a right forwards against attack. You have a go, we'll have a go. And they just nullified each other. With everybody very solid, both teams very, very solid, solid defensively. And getting back behind the ball getting very, back very ball. quickly. Good, as you always say, good lines between Correct, yeah. midfield good distances, and, and your yeah. defenders and everybody there. Now, the winning goal, just, just, just say to everybody what you just said to us off air when you looked at the winning goal again. No, it's really interesting. In, in, a, in an era where we talk about playing out from the back and so forth. Yeah, I mean, both, you know, both teams are, are so good at playing out from the back and trying to thread the lines and, and find ways of playing back to front. We saw Arsenal try and Manchester City so many times today playing out from the back. But this is just so simple. It's 
somebody spotting a space at the top end of the field, Tomiyasu from left back, making a run forward, someone having the quality to find him with a direct pass, not a long pass. And then old school, knock it down to your playing partner, hold the ball up, have a shot at goal, as Dion said. A bit of luck at the end, but it's like one, two passes and a little layoff, and suddenly you beat this terrific Manchester City team. It's it's something that was falling out of football, that let's play mm -hmm. forward, let's go direct. <clears throat> and now you see at the very top, you know, we're talking about potentially a title decider come the end of the season, direct pass, good goal. Yeah, I, thought, I, thought, I, I just think sometimes you've got, to, you've got to go away from what you think you should be doing and do something that's going to benefit your side in that moment. And that's what it was. It was a 40, 50 yard pass. It was a quality pass. It wasn't a hump. It was a quality pass into an area where your teammate had to be. It was nodded down to his, to his partner at the time. And then he set his up. No, it was a good goal. You saw the, 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 the not quite panic from Manchester City, but nobody really plays that way again no. because they give the ball no. away. They play in front at one ball over and three Manchester City players just trying to swarm the area. And suddenly if you do that, if you do something different, mm. you catch people yeah. off guard. Yeah. Yeah. And not expecting it. Not expecting it. And, and Arsenal The fact the that Arsenal won the game probably means the Mateo Kovacic debate is not quite as heated or <laughs> controversial as it might have been. But we still would need to talk to our friend Dermot Gallagher about it all, Dermot, because actually it was very significant. Good evening to you. Two incidents, two tackles to look at. So two slightly different conversations, Dermot. The first one, Michael Oliver, I think we'd all agree, is our best Premier League referee. He deems this just to be a yellow card and not a straight red. Are you, are you happy with that decision? I think this could have went either way, Mark. I think it's right on the cusp. And since it's happened, we've heard this term, you know, it's, a, it's an orange card, meaning it's above a, a yellow. I heard it's a pink card, meaning it's below a red. And I think that's how fine it is. What I would say is, having survived that on a yellow card, the next challenge doesn't really, for me, take much more to send him off. Um, this one, you know, what you would say, that, that's his view. He thinks a yellow card. The VAR went with him. I understand why the referees make that decision. And I like the fact the referee makes the decision on the field. But on another day, it could have easily went another way. Absolutely. Well, I think that we would all agree with that. OK, so you know as a referee, but particularly you know as a player, Dermot, right, if as a player I put in another poor challenge, I may well be off. How lucky is Kovacic not to be sent off for a second yellow a few moments later? Oh, I, I, I think he's dodged a bullet, Mark, honestly. You know, you see the tackle... It's what you would say. There's a few things I noticed. The first thing, you've just had a yellow card two minutes earlier, three minutes earlier. You just do not make a tackle like this. He's nowhere near the ball. What I would say, if you think the first one's on the cusp, which I do, the second one's tipped him over the edge for me. You know, that said. But it's interesting if you look at the referee. The referee immediately, you know, transmits to everybody on the field, no, I am not going to send him off. He's quite clear. He gives the old no that he's made his decision. He made his decision very, very clearly, very forcefully. Everybody knew what he was doing. If you watch the referee now, there's the tackle. Look at the referee. No. It's, he just says, no, I'm not going to send him off. It's, it's so obvious he's made that decision. And what, you, what the other thing is, Mark, it's either got to be a straight red or nothing. Well, I don't think it's a straight red if you look at that compared to the first one. So therefore, it's got to be... Uh, VAR can't intervene because it's the second, possible second yellow. Referee says no, so he stays on the field. Derm, I think um, the referee, he, he completely diffuses the situation, which is, which is good, and he's made a decision on what he's decided to do. However, if Kovacic hadn't had a yellow, would he have got a yellow for the second challenge? <laughs> Impossible, Impossible question to answer, Dion, but <laughs> the, the evidence is there for everybody to see. You know, I, what I would say that for, for me... As I say, I think the first one, as I said, is right on the cusp. And if it's that close, the second one for me would definitely tip him over the edge. I know you too well, Derm. You'd have given him a red for both. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have walked, yeah. Derm, thank you very much indeed. Take care, Derm, Derm has explained that very well. Yes, but I think we absolutely. would all agree. Definitely. Yeah, it's not I, very often. I find often. a bit unfathomable where he didn't get a second yellow. It's don't not you? very often I agree with Derm. And he's right, Derm. he went straight away. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. It's he not very often away. I agree with Derm, but I do that. I think the culmination of Correct. the two tackles. Yeah. I'm very surprised that he stayed on the field. Mm, I yeah. think uh, Michael Oliver would have known that the first one was borderline, but he's made the decision that it's mm. just a yellow and that's completely fine. But you also know that referees have in the back of their mind, one more and you're off. You know, that mm. mantra, if you any more of them, son, and you're off. And uh, the fact that he followed it up like that, I was surprised. 
Da he did, he did then. Yeah. Valentine. But we we we've had we had this conversation when we came on air tonight that the referees we would love it if the referees would talk to the players a little bit more. Say, listen, be careful now. Yes. You know, yeah. if you've had a yellow, just be careful. I will give you another yellow, but just be careful what you're doing. Players would appreciate that. You know, they'd appreciate that you're you know you're trying to keep the game eleven. Nobody wants to see players get sent off. So, but. When we played, or when I played, about 15 years before he played, <laughs> yeah. you know, we could talk to the referees and say, Dylan, I've given you a yellow now, just be careful, because yep. I'll, I'll send you off if you're, I need to. You're, you're walking a tight Correct. Back. Right, Manchester City, so few shots by their high sounds, four in the game, and none after the 52nd minute mark. So there's three games in a row they've lost, all without Rodri. I don't think we can make a direct correlation to no Rodri to what's going on, can we? Um, <laughs> I mean, Arsenal sat quite deep. We're not necessarily, sorry, not deep, quite tight in their block. Potentially, but, I mean, as, as you're saying there, Arsenal tactically were very good. They, they swarmed the middle of the field. Look how many bodies they've got in that narrow area. They allowed Manchester City space in the wider areas. But Rodri not being there can change how Manchester City attack. He allows people to confidently go and pick up more aggressive positions, find themselves in number 10 spots in and around Haaland. I mean, we don't usually see Manchester City no. crossing from those angles, and certainly not that deep. But Rodri there, that's that's a, that's a clinical pass. People are getting on the ball, and then suddenly you've got Foden and Alvarez getting on the ball in more attacking positions. I didn't see that enough in this game. I didn't see balls being threaded through to those players yeah. in those positions. And that's not only he defends Rodri, but that's what he does. He threads those passes clinically. And I think yeah. they really miss him at both ends of the I field. I think because Arsenal went very tight down the centre of the pitch, basically saying to City, if you want to go down the side, we are happy to yeah. defend the crosses. But City don't want to do that. They want to play the beautiful game all the time. And they often, more often than not, get it right. But today, Arsenal are in a five and a four, the party at the end of the game and Declan sat there, they couldn't get through the middle and they didn't want to cross it from wide. And yet, and yet, we've seen this film before with yes. City. If you support Man City around the world, don't, don't go to bed or get up and go to work crying because come the spring... They find yeah. their straps. We, we could have sat here this time last year and gone, oh, City are a bit off-colour, aren't they? Which they were. They're not as good as they were last season. They come Yeah, good, and they're, they? not, they're not too far away from where they were yeah, last season no. and went on to comfortably win the title. So, yeah, you, you always know, if they're there in and around March time, even at the, the beginning of April, and they're within reach, then they'll get themselves a run. They'll get themselves together and inevitably be there or thereabouts. My name is Derek Ray, and with me is my commentary partner, Lee Dixon, and no question, this ought to be a game that gets pulses racing. It is Manchester City, and they face Blackpool. Well, thank you, Derek. All the talking is done. Time now to put the coach's plans into action. Let's hope both teams really have a go at each other from the start of this match. It should be a cracker. And here's the Manchester City lineup. Ederson begins in goal. Alexander Zinchenko starts with Joao Cancelo in the fullback positions. Chances on. No worries for the keeper. Rodri. It's with Gundogan. It's a promising City move. Gabriel Jesus! A corner will ensue. And De Bruyne firing it over. Not to be this time. And one of the star attractions, no doubt about it. Kevin De Bruyne in midfield. Lee, what sort of performance will we see from the Belgian? Well, for me, Derek, he's the best all-round midfielder in the world. His range of passing. He might be able to make it through. Gabriel Jesus! There it is! A delightful start to this match. Just what they were hoping for. Well, as we can see again here, he knows exactly what he's doing and kids all the defenders with the cutback. And the thunderous strike to beat the keeper hands down is absolutely brilliant. The opening goal of the game then. Yates. He's given us away.
Gabriel Jesus. Given away by City. Yates. City have the ball again. Oh, that's an interesting pass. Well, wasted opportunity here. Would have been a 